Welcome back to Andri's Homestead Life. In this vlog, we are making chow chow relish and stuffed peppers and courgettes slash marrow. I've got the ingredients ready for making a chow chow relish. I haven't measured the ingredients out yet. We've picked the ingredients together and I'm just going to tell you the measurements from my Paul's canning book. So, it asks for two cups of English cucumber, one and a half cups of red bell peppers, one and a half cups of chopped cabbage, one and a half cups of sliced onions, one and a half cups of green tomatoes, nine cups of water, one cup of canning salt, three cups of uh, white vinegar, two and a half cups of granulated sugar, three tablespoons mustard seed, two tablespoons celery seeds, one tablespoon ground turmeric, one and a half cups of diced green beans, blanched, one and a half cups of diced peeled carrots, blanched. So that's the recipe. The only thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna use my delicious apple cider vinegar instead of the white wine and I haven't got celery seeds, so I'm gonna have to leave that out, but all the rest I'm gonna follow the recipe for. So let's get started. I'm going to, I've washed all these uh, ingredients now. Let's get chopping. Let's pick some cucumbers. I need gloves because they're so sp spiky. <laughs> the cukes, is, cukes are so spiky. I've got my little list in here again, so I've need two cups worth of cucumbers. So I don't need many cucumbers. Perhaps I need just a few. These cucumbers now really started producing amazing. Look, sun's out now. It's 30th of August, Wednesday. It's really chilly this morning. I was up early today. Right, I think that's enough for today, for the chow chow. We need one and a half cups of green tomatoes next. And then we're going to the garden to get some same amount of green beans and carrots. And I'm gonna pick bouquet, because that's on my list as well. green zebra as a green tomato. One and a half cups. I don't need many. I'll pick a few of the red zebra. So that's the green zebra and the red zebra. I'm going to pick this courgette. It's going so big now. It's like a marrow. We're going to stuff this. I'm going to pick some beans. some more project to pick. These one more like a marrow as well. So I might I'm thinking about maybe I'm going to stuff a few with a similar mixture what we're gonna put in a 
stuffed pepper or I might make zucchini flour, maybe freeze dry some and powder it. Beautiful. It's cosmos. Yes. Just taking off the one that's gone over. Oh, that's gone over. I really enjoy picking my own flower bouquet every week. It lasts for the week. In the kitchen, in the vase. taking some leaves off so I can make it look fit better in the vase. The zinnia, cosmos, gladioli, dahlia and the sunflower Just an amazing combination. I've done it. I'm happy with it. Very happy. Look. Look at this beautiful bouquet I made from our garden. I grew all this over the years. The cosmos is my new flower for this year. I mean love. So cosmos will stay in my garden for a long time. The gladiolas I had that dahlias now I'm growing and uh, zinnias now for a few years, sunflowers. Oh, pretty! Let's pick in the peppers for the stuffed pepper. Oops. Let's 
become really soft because it's, I think it's really ripe now, this orange, no, it's yellow monster. It's the yellow monster bell pepper. I found a good one actually, these are the best. What's this? Amy. Yeah, this one's called Amy. That's good stuff, that is. That's a yellow monster. It's still green, but we're going to pick it now. It's end of August and they've got huge. Let's pick a few more Amy. That Amy would be really good and prolific for this small plant. Eat Kazeshi paprika. I'm gonna pick these ripe ones as well as some of the yellow ones. These are Hungarian stuffers. It's paprika rochni. That's from. Czech Republic, that's Czech, and that's a very nice one, perfect stuffing, and it's loads on it, wow, and a small plant, absolutely covered, wow, I'm really impressed with that paprika rochni, this Czech stuffer, Really, it's got probably the largest stuffers, and it goes from this color to red when it's ripe. And it's, I think it's a lovely sweet one. We'll try it in the kitchen. Okay, I think we might just got enough now because we need to process this as well. So we just finished picking our harvest for today, what we're going to produce. So I'm going to make chow chow relish using up the carrot, cucumber, beans, tomatoes and I've got already picked some cabbages and pepper and we're going to make stuffed pepper with these lovely stuffers and I've got all these Courgettes, what more like a marrow, and I need to think of a recipe what we're gonna do with these. See you in the kitchen. I'm just chopping up. I've lost my knife. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I'm just chopping these uh, yellow and purple beans and green beans up, kind of like a bite size pieces. And we're going to blanch it for 30 seconds. The water is now boiling behind me. So let's go there. It's only 30 seconds. We're going to blanch these green beans. I've just got that beans now in that hot boiling water and we're going to blanch the beans for 30 seconds. I bought a new food processor. Well, I'm just trialing now. I'm doing the first time trying to put them together, put it together. It's so many attachment to it. But I think I'm gonna love it. <laughs> I think it's gonna save me so much time because I used to chop everything by hand and it just takes forever, hours and hours. And with big jobs like that, you know, it's just it's just so much easier when the food processor do the half of the job for me. So I've just done this carrot, tried my first blade chopper and I think I think I I think I like it. <laughs> so I need one and a half cups of most of this uh, vegetable, so it's gonna be fun. So, okay, that's one, 
one and a half. Okay, I've still got some leftovers in here. I'm just gonna find something to put that in. I put the water back on a boil because we need to blanch these carrots as well for 30 seconds in a boil in water and take it out immediately. So I have done the beans, cool down, it's cool to touch, and now we need one and a half cups of that beans as well. I've got this big pot behind me and that's where I'm going to put all the vegetables that will have to stay overnight in a brine. So that's one and a half. Oh, you know, I'm going to put all in and I put all the carrots in as well. It's not going to be a huge batch. About two cups. Right, and now I'm going to lunch in this little basket all of these. I've used, ended up using all of the carrots. And then that water is boiling, I will pop that in. A few more minutes. Let's go and chop the, the onions. I'm sorry though. These onions up and the cucumbers. Actually, um, that Maggi mix, the same brand, you know what my um, ice cream maker is? Maggi mix, Maggi mix, love it. I think that's that's perfect. Again, one and a half cups. Yeah, of the onion as well. So it's like one, one and a half. I don't want to put too much of this, but look, already we've got the onion, the beans. And actually, I like it that I picked the beans in different colors, because that will look, look, look nice in the relish. The cucumber. And now we're going to have the, up oh, the water is boiling, so we can put the carrot now in the water for 30 seconds. We don't want to cook them, just blanch it. Take them out. Now let's measure the peppers out. So we need one and a half cups of thick bell peppers. Um, I'm gonna put two because I've got two of everything. Perfect. Nice clean hands. I think this is gonna be delicious. Looking good already. We need the same amount. I'm sticking more to two cups now of that cabbage as well. I'm just going to put that through as well. Put my compost in here. The slicer. Now we've got the cabbage and the green tomatoes so i'm gonna put this through the slicer as well you're gonna laugh now but i just totally changed the recipe because i've decided i'm not going to can this so i safe to play around i just didn't like the sound of all these ingredients <laughs> and so the end when i had a good read Beautiful this looks. Can you see it? 
Let me just put, let me just bring you closer. So I've put all the, I've put two cups of everything. So I've got cucumber, mixed colored bell peppers, cabbage, onion, green tomatoes, what are my ripened green and red zebra, and I've put the blanched two cups of carrots and beans mixed colored beans and I'm just thinking I'm gonna pour this brine over and I leave it overnight but I made up my own brine as well because I thought it was just too much what the recipe said so I've just put one cup of water one cup of apple cider vinegar one cup of sugar two tablespoons of pink Himalayan salt and I'm leaving out the mustard seed and turmeric as well and I'm just going to stir this until everything dissolves. I don't want to cook it, otherwise it loses all the goodness. So I think I'm going to leave this, I mean, I'll jar it, I'm just going to keep it in a fridge. So, and this is, everything is nicely dissolve the sugar and the salt I'm just going to pour this over leave this overnight and tomorrow we're just going to you know squeeze it out the juice oh it smells delicious pack, pack, pack it in a jars pour some of the brine over it and that can go because it's not, not that much. I think we can eat this, you know, in the next couple of months. But this is, this is going to be delicious. Let's try this. Mmm. Yeah. That's perfect. That is perfect. I'm going to leave this as it is. I'm not going to put anything else to it. Put the lid on. Leave it till the rest of the day, overnight, and tomorrow morning we finished. We're gonna jar this. Our next job is to make the stuffed pepper. I'm not going through all the stages because we've done this a month ago. But this time I'm going to use goat's mincemeat. And we're going to use all these peppers and a courgette or marrow, because it's quite large. And we're going to stuff them. So. What I'm doing now, I am just removing. Oh, wow, look what's in there. That's weird. Like pepper grows in a pepper. I'm just removing the insides. Just gonna cut them around like that. Gently remove it. All the seeds, most of the veins, until they're nice and open and I'm going to partially cook the rice first in chicken and vegetable broth with a bit of salt and then I'll bring you back and what we're gonna put in a mixture and I'm gonna tell you about all the ingredients I'm going to start to partially cook the rice, so I'm using one cup of, it's like a pudding rice, it's now round, one cup of rice, I'm just going to wash this and then we're going to put two cups of chicken broth and one teaspoon of salt. Two cups of broth. One cup. Of 
teaspoon, sorry, <laughs> of pink Himalayan salt and put this on medium heat. I'm going to partially cook this rice. Now I'm going to get a cup full of pork lard, put that on a stove, get that going. I'm going to put the onions in. One. Two, three, I would say about four cups of onions. I'm gonna put this on the lard and get that going. Just stir in that rice. We can remove the rice now, partially cooked. So we get the onion going, put the lid on for 10 minutes, and then we're going to put one. Again, about four cups of cabbage with the onion. And I'm gonna put salt and pepper on it. Yeah, it's about four cups. Right, let's weigh a kilogram of mincemeat out. Because we're going to use one kilogram of mincemeat to one cup of partially cooked rice and the leftover we're gonna use to stuff the courgette with so that's one kilogram in there right i have got let me just put the garlic out from here I'm going to put the meat mixture in. I'm going to put some more bits and bobs. Got the one kilogram of minced meat. And now we're going to add the rest of the ingredients. I'm going to use teaspoons of oregano. I'm using dried oregano today. I'm going to add a teaspoon of garlic powder. We also have about eight cloves of garlic in there as well. I'm gonna add maybe an eighth of a teaspoon of mint. And dill, dill powder, mint powder, about an eighth of a teaspoon. Oop, that may be more of a teaspoon now. Oh, it smells lovely. And we're going to add, we've got the washing machine going. And close that door. I'm gonna add a bit of a leftover of this mixture. I probably leave it for tomato sauce. I'm gonna leave that and this little ketchup in the tomato sauce a bit, but we're gonna pour over the peppers. Next, we are adding a teaspoon of onion powder. Now I'll just decide to cut the grass, so I hope you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all happening in here. Paprika powder. Again, a teaspoon. 
teaspoon of paprika powder. And I'm going to put a bit of pepper, salt, teaspoon. Right. What's next? More smoked paprika and now more of a half a teaspoon and now the liquidy ingredients so we are putting I've got a bit of a leftover of the jalapeno salsa so maybe we we'll put a little bit in there like that can uh, put tomato paste I'm going to put a jar in there and I'm going to put two green tomato chutney in there as well. Yes. One and two and we're going to get a board mix. I'm going to mix this together and we're going to cook this on a stove until all the flavors get together, the meat turns color. You know, but before we add this to the onion mixture, we are going to add the garlic and the cabbage. Mmm, smells delicious. So it's been 10 minutes, this onion sauteed really good. Got a little bit of a color. And now we're going to add garlic and a cabbage. I decided to add this this time, like that. And give it a good stir and put the lid back on for another 10 to 15 minutes. Put this meat mixture on a side for now, for another 10 to 15 minutes until the onion, garlic and cabbage mixture get nice and get the flavors together and saute. Next, we're going to get the sauce ready. So I'm going to use this big four liter jug and we're going to add the leftover of the chicken broth this is the leftover of the quart jar what we use to make partially cook the rice in i can take the label off you know i keep the labels for the next batch and we clean the jars next vegetable salsa we're gonna use the vegetable salsa next for some reason i left the ring on Perfect. So that can go in. Pull it stuck. Okay. Next, we put the seasoned tomato sauce. All these yummy things from our last year's garden. Can go in. Oh, smells delicious. And we're gonna put, so that was three, now two quarts, one half of the quart of the leftover of the chicken broth. And we're gonna put this pint of basic tomato sauce with basil in it as well. That gave us nearly, nearly three liter sauce we've got there. I'm also going to add a bit of a leftover of my plum sauce needs using up and ketchup I'm always sniffing <laughs> make sure everything's still good we're gonna put this leftover tomato juice in here as well we now are dead on three liter maybe a bit more of this jalapeno cowboy candy and I think we're good, so I'm going to leave this in here for now until we need it. 
We only need this before we're going to put the stuffed peppers and courgettes to the oven. And what I have, I'm good because I didn't have a time to make cheese. I took some uh, cottage cheese out of the freezer just. So, the nut though, we're going to pour that on a top and put the topping on the end. So, let's, let's tidy up. Right, next we are going to deal with this courgette because it's quite a decent size now I'm going to peel the courgette I've got my compost bin in here and this one is even bigger so the skin is still nice and soft I'm gonna I'm going to peel this and take the seeds out because we're going to stuff this. All right, that's been now cooking nicely for 15 minutes. We're ready to put the meat mixture in. So this mixture is for both of the courgette and for the stuffed pepper. Give it a good mix. And we're going to cook this for another 15 minutes until that meat is partially cooked. I want it to do, before we put these peppers in, I'm going to put a layer of this sauerkraut to the bottom. This is last year's sauerkraut from the pantry. Right, something like that. That's it. Now we can put the peppers back and we pour this tomato sauce mixture over and we put it in the oven. And we're gonna do the same. Probably I'm gonna put the courgettes in this dish. Right, it's been now nearly two hours that these stuffed peppers are in the oven. Let's have a look. Oh, looking good. Looking very good. Let's have a look at the courgette. I'm gonna put some cheese on it as well. Stuffed courgette looking good. So we've got two trays of stuffed courgette. Looking good. I'm just going to put some cheese on it, on both. It's still frozen with cottage cheese. have to put what we've got just a little bit just like that and I will put this back again for like another 15 minutes it is the next day and I can say we had a very successful day yesterday making the stuffed peppers and courgettes and also the chow chow relish. Smells delicious. I've got clean hands. Let's have a taste test. This is amazing. This is honestly amazing. I know I have changed the recipe. I'm so happy I did. I'm gonna use these small ish jars 
think they already got like a tiny jars. I'm gonna tuck this in tight like that. Push if I push it down, you know, the water level will come up. So I fill these jars about an inch headspace and we'll see how many jars we can have on and I will wipe the rim, fill it up with the juice so it just covers the vegetable and that will go to the fridge and that will last in a fridge for me up to six months and we can have this with you know like fried chicken any kind of like fried meat or vegetable, fried kohlrabi, cauliflower, mushroom, chicken, beef, pork, whatever you like, or as just on its own. And um, I think we're going to enjoy this. So I am so happy. On the other hand, these stuffed peppers are delicious. And what I'm tempting, we have tried both, we have guessed it as well, we all three of us enjoyed it. I probably leave it quite a, f a few out for the next couple of days so we can enjoy it for lunch or dinners. And then I am tempting to freeze dry it. A bit of the courgette and a bit of the pepper as well as a meal. So that's gonna be an experiment, what I, I'm going to do. So yeah, this is gonna be fresh eating and freeze dried. And I will let you know how did that turn out. But for now, I'm gonna say goodbye. And I hope you enjoyed this vlog. And see you very soon with all my other preservation methods. Bye friends.